Looks like he's seen some action, huh? Oh, yeah, some. Yeah. You? I've been peeling spuds with this lousy base. What kind of duty are you pulling? Battleship, yeah. guns, second loader. I'm hoping to catch a tin can. Yeah, well, there's a lot of them here. Yeah, make a collect from Calvin, operator. Calvin Gray, man. Pearl! Excuse me, ma'am. Pearl! Hi, this is Calvin. I'm at the Naval Air Station. Well, I don't know. I got my orders right here, though. Now, they're sealed, Pearl. If the seal's broke, I'd get in trouble. Look, sis, I gotta go report in. If you don't hear from me for a while, don't worry. I'll let you know what's going on as soon as I can. No, I ain't no trouble. It looks like they're letting me stay in, sis. I'm hoping for a destroyer. Yeah, tell mom I love her. I love you, too. Bye. Can I help you? Yeah, I was uh, supposed to give these to the officer of the day. What you got here, sailor? Seaman First Class Graham reporting his orders, sir. I get a destroyer, sir? Take a seat over there, Graham. Be just a few minutes. Yes, sir. Seaman First Class Grant. Yes, sir. Is there a problem, sir? Sir, what's going on? Sir, really? I, I, sir, this is a mistake. Well, there's a mistake, all right. Uh, but you're the one that made it. Hey, what the hell you think you're doing? Rule number one. You keep your damn mouth shut unless somebody asks you to open it. Sir, I don't know what it says. You got bad ears, boy. I said, take your damn clothes off. Sweet home. I'm Scotty Bloxham. Six days on the wrong side of AWOL, among other things. 
Calvin. Calvin Graham. How old are you, kid? Twelve. Twelve. Look, Calvin, you want to lie about your age, do it. But don't do it in here. This is hard time. I ain't lying. You want to know what I did? I enlisted in the Navy. I was 12 years old. I was sent to the South Pacific. I fought for my country. Then they caught me. They told me to report to my recruiter in Houston. When I did that, they sent me here. I was thinking I was going to catch another ship. Hey, look, Calvin, I'm not a big fan of the Navy way of doing things. But one thing I do know, they don't put 12-year-olds in the brig. A lot of these guys, they bugged out in combat. Lying about your age is one of the biggest dodges going. So wise up, kid. Now hear this. Prisoners first section fall in from sir? Western inspection. Excuse me, sir. Can I talk to you for a minute? Sir, if you'll just check my records, you'll see that somebody's made a mistake. Ah! Don't you ever speak to me unless I ask you to. You little coward. Coward? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm no you coward. Do, commit suicide? Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Forget I'm not it. a coward. You okay? Yeah, fine. Just fine. You have no idea how hard I tried to pass for 17. Now I can't pass for 12. You're telling the truth, aren't you? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Yeah, but how? I mean... Me and Frank, just after Pearl Harbor. The cowardly Japanese attack was relentless as wave after wave of carrier-based aircraft swarmed down on our unsuspecting Pacific fleet. Huge columns of dense black smoke billowing up, blocking the sun. Eight battleships sunk or badly damaged. Many other ships crippled by bombs and torpedoes. Thousands of American sailors, soldiers, and Marines killed or wounded. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I'll tell you this, Ralph. I'd have been there, I'd have picked up a machine gun, blown them all away, right out of the sky. Boom, boom, die, you can't die. Yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me, ma'am. Ruffian. Sorry. You know, for a couple of kids, you two sure talk tough. We are tough, right? Oh, okay. Cal, you're tough. a baby. Ah! Oh, my oh, God! Oh, oh, come back here with my cat! Oh. <laughs> That should be me out there, Calvin. I'm ready to fight the jam. Oh, me too, Frank. If they give me a Calvin, gun, I'm, I'm serious. Well, hell, I bet half the guys out there are underage. Well, look, right there's Tommy. That's Tommy Johnson. And Tommy! Well, he's only a year older than I am, Calvin. He's only 15. Come on. Come on, we gotta get home. Don't you walk away from me, then when I want something, I mean I want it now. You understand me? You hear what I say? Now get in there. You get in and make supper like you're supposed to. I want you. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mom. Just where the hell have you two been all day? To the movies? I, I told you this morning we were going you to the movies, Pat. I told you. you I'm on the backyard. Leave them alone. I want you to go get out there and get out of here. Go to your room. Now. Here. Go. Don't you come between me and them boys. When I'm talking to them boys, you just stay away. You understand me? Mama sure picked a louse to marry, huh? Hey, Frank. Yeah? Why'd Dad have to die? Because he got into a car wreck. That's why. Well, I know that, Frank. But why? I don't know, Calvin. I just don't know. Hey, you go to sleep. I think I'm going to join up pretty soon. What branch? Navy. How? 
Well, I talked to some guys. All you need is a notarized letter from your folks saying you're 17. What does notarized mean? Well, I don't know for sure yet, Calvin. It's got something to do with a special stamp. I'll find out. I gotta get away from that man, Calvin. You know, Mom ain't gonna sign for you, Frank. Yeah, I know. I'll figure something out. So, what day are we gonna join? Wait. You walk in there now to toss you out for sure. Oh, come on, Frank. I look older than I am, and you know it. Calvin, you look like what you are. At least when you drive behind the ears. <laughs> when I'm tired of oh, oh. I do what I want, lady. You understand me? I do what I want. Oh, oh, oh. Don't talk to me about drinking, woman. The drinking is my business. You just leave me alone about it. Mama, what the hell's going on? Get out of here. Sit down, boy. Get your hands off my mother. Go to Pearls, you'll be safe there. Go, go, go. They're asleep. That doesn't matter. Pearl won't care if we wake them up. Let's go. No. No. Come on, Frank. Pearl's our sister. She won't care. Listen, Pearl's already stuck with one of Dad's kids. What are we gonna do? Give her two more to raise? Well, hell, Calvin, her and Spencer just got married. That ain't no way for oh, newlyweds. Spencer won't care. Calvin, look at the damn house. It's not big enough for all of us. Come on, Frank, we gotta go somewhere. And we sure as hell ain't going back to Moss. But let's go tell Pearl what happened. We're on our own, Calvin, okay? Just get that through your thick head, will ya? Be a man! Look, Calvin. We're gonna make it, okay? We will make it. I, I promise you. Come on. What do you want, kid? You got a room? No, I rent canaries. Of course I've got a room. Well, how much? Uh, 50 cents a day or uh, three bucks a week. Hey, what you got? <laughs> My name's Harry. Uh, I don't give room service, no towels, no toilet paper, and the number one heave-ho, no cooking in the lousy room. Well, hey, Harry, I see on that sign right there you're in notary public. That mean you notarize things? You actually uh, figured that out, huh? Room 42, scram. Home sweet home. Frank, I trapped you. Go. Yeah. That's the rules. At least you learned something from me. <laughs> Got you, Frank. <laughs> well, all right, Dan. Well, come on. Let's see your report card. 
Oh, come on. I know you got it. Come on, let me see it. Okay. You're gonna flunk and keep this up. Oh, I hate school, Frank. I don't belong there with them kids. You wanna use a pick and shovel all your life, Calvin? Yeah, give me a pan. Hey, Frank, I've been thinking. Why don't we go up to the farm, you know, live with Grandma Tire? It's great up there, Frank. Grandma could use our help. No way I'm going up to the boonies. Oh, I'm going to see the world, Calvin. I'm going to see all of it. This look like Mom's signature? Close enough. You're going to have to do better than that, Calvin. I mean it. Oh, look who's talking. Let's see your report card, Frank. Calvin, you don't need to see my report card. Come on, show it. All right. You're gonna flunk you keep this up, Frank. Shut up and sign it. You want to use a pick and shovel all your life? Well, maybe I do, Calvin. Hey, you still hustling ping pong? Why? Want to play? No way. Listen, I got a real loud mouth in my company. Help me out. Okay, bring him on by. See what I can do. See ya. Thanks. Why didn't you tell me last night? Well, I, I didn't know myself till this morning. I, I just said the heck with it and got in mind. I left you a note in the room, though. I made it, Calvin. I made it. Well, how'd you get the notarized letter from Ma? I borrowed Harry Stan. It was a cinch. Now talk to Pearl. You're going to stay with her. Well, Frank, I don't want to stay with her. I want to go with you. Hey, I'll sneak in. They'll never see me. Calvin, you listen to me now. If I could take you, I would. But I can't. Frank, you're all I got. What am I gonna do? You're gonna do what you always done, Calvin. You're gonna be a man and stand on your own two feet. Hey, Frank. Frank. Frank, I love you. I love you too, Calvin. Sergeant Jackson, lay up to the master at arm shack on the double. I was just talking to one of the guards about what you're in here for. Sure as hell ain't for being underage, kid. What do you mean? They say you're a deserter. Glad I'm not in your shoes. What did he want? Desertion. They think I deserted. No wonder the guards are treating you so bad. Deserters get no privileges. Hey, look, don't they have to give me a trial or something like that, yeah. right? If you were a civilian, yeah. But in here, hey, sonny boy, the military don't have to give you squat. This is wartime. You could be shot. They could line you up shot. But I didn't desert, Scotty. I'm not a deserter. <laughs> Come on, honey, go away. Make a wish. Oh, my God. My baby's 12 years old. Hard to believe. Time's passing me by. <laughs> Mom, can I go home now and live with you and Pratt? Calvin, I... Give him a while longer. Maybe... Maybe he'll change his mind. But not yet. Well, then let me join up, Mama. They need all the guys they can get, and they're asking for volunteers on the radio all the time. You're 12 years old. Mama, lots of guys that are underage are joining. Well, Frank was only 14. You didn't stop him. Well, look at me. I can pass for 17. I'm big enough. I told you, Calvin. I will not lie for you. You bring me a paper from the Navy. It says they will take a 12-year-old 
I'll sign it. But I will not lie and tell them you are 17. I won't. That's final. Uh, How you doing? Okay. You're underage too, huh? What you talking about? I'm 17. I was born on April. volunteer information. It's a dead giveaway. I'm only 15. Cleon. Cleon Jackson. Calvin. Green. I'm 15 too. Where it is, they're taking anybody who can walk through that door. But they're taking a long, good look at the young guy. I guess all types are trying to join up. Yeah, I guess. All right, this is this group here. Why don't you take this to the clerk and then get back? I'll have some. Sorry. Take off your hat. What's the matter, you two jerks? You can't read? Read? Sure, sure, sure I can read. I'm old enough to read. Oh, yeah? Take a look at that no smoking sign. What does it say? No smoking. No smoking. How they expect us to win a war, these idiots, I'll never know. It says here, line 3A, year of birth is 1924. Let me get to line 4D, it says 1925. What's the matter, boy? Your mama born you twice? No, no, sir. 1925 is correct. You little brat, get your butt out of here before I call the cops. <laughs> All you people who are underage, and there's a whole darn bunch of you in here, I want you to get up and get out of here now before you wind up in jail. I mean it. Get out of here now. Four days out. I'll get the rest of them. Count on. Sloker, huh? You trying to tell me you're 17 years old? Yes, sir. Where were you born? April 3rd, 1925, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Well, people, you're in the Navy now. I don't know what the hell you're so excited about. You're not going to some boys' camp. You are going to war. Now, you report back here tomorrow morning at 0600 at 6 a.m. for swearing in. When I say fall out, I want all those without birth certificates to stay in this room. All right. Fall out. I told you I'd get you. This here is an age verification form. You will take this document home to your parents, have them sign it in front of a notary public, and return it to me tomorrow morning signed and notarized. So either show up tomorrow with this form or don't show up at all. Okay. 
Come on up and get them. Seventeen years old, huh? Yes, sir. We'll see. Are you sure we can pull it off? It's a cinch. Now, give me plenty of time to get in there. All right. Hey, Harry. Mm-hmm. Calvin, I ain't seen you in a while. So what's been going on? Don't tell me room 12, no time. No, 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 Harry, I don't want a room. I was just passing by, I thought I'd drop in, see how you doing. The Japs are killing us in the Pacific. How do you think I'm doing? If I were a younger man, I would. Hartley Hotel, Harry. Damn bums. Thanks. Tell them a hundred times, no cooking in the rooms. I got smoke coming from the fourth floor front. Damn bums will burn this place down and give them a chance. Watch the cash register for me, will you, kid? I'll be right back. Sure, Harry. Thanks, Harry. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it is. It looks like your mom's singing to you. Well, my mama doesn't write this good, but she'll do. How about yours? Looks exactly like my aunt's handwriting. You did it, Calvin. We're really in the Navy. We're in the Navy. Yeah. Yeah. And just what are you going to tell Mama? Her 12-year-old son just disappears, and you don't think she'll ask questions? I want you to tell Aunt Lot and Uncle Reuben wrote and ask them to come down and help Mom on the farm with Texo. She'll check. How? They don't got a phone down there, Pearl. You think she'll walk 160 miles to check on me? It'll work if you just go along. Calvin, and... I can't lie to Mama. What do you want me to do, Pearl? I can't stay here with you and Spencer forever. You're already raising one of Daddy's kids. You need your own lives, Pearl. You need the room. You want me living on the street again? Pearl, if I go in the Navy, I got a place to live. I got... I got a purpose. You don't need me. Mama doesn't need me. But my country does need me. Please? He's right. He's a child. The hell he is. Look at the kind of life he's had. Good God, Pearl Calvin was picking cotton when he was five years old. Been on his own since he turned eight. He never had a childhood. None of his family has. Leave him be to find his life. Let's suppose you get away with this for a while. Sooner or later, Mama's going to know. Then what are you going to do? I don't know. But I'll work something out. I'm very proud of you.
No, don't. Don't look at me, ma'am. Just listen. My name is Calvin Gray, ma'am, and I'm 12 years old. The Navy has made a mistake, and they've thrown me in this brig. Please call my sister in Houston. Her name is Pearl Spencer. Just call her and tell her where I'm at. Is this man bothering you, ma'am? Uh, no. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, he's a little wacky. Come, girls. Do you want to play games? Well, you try this. I turn my back and I give you a 50-yard head start. Well, you're pretty good at running away. Go ahead, run. I bet you're real good at shooting people in the back. This is the third time you done tried this, Graham. But you ain't gonna get another chance. Because from now on, you ain't gonna leave the cell block. Dirty Turk. I don't know why. You ask my mama, she'll tell you I'm one nice son of a sailor man. <laughs> you people are not civilians anymore. And you sure as hell ain't sailors. You're nothing. You low-life scum! You're dog meat! But you are mine! Do you hear me? Mine! Now, for the next six weeks, I will provide you with everything you need. I will see to it that you get some real colorful clothing. My personal hairdresser, Andre Lafitte, We'll go lightly over your ears. I will see to it that you get a real, real comfortable bed. And by George, I'll even teach you how to make the darn thing. After a night of comfortable sleep, I will come into your barracks and very gently, very quietly, wake you up. I will see to it that my pal, Chef Pierre Lagajaru, serves you his hot, nourishing, internationally renowned breakfast. From there, I will take you to the dispensary where two of the most beautiful nurses in the whole U.S. of A. will tell you to drop your drawers and insert a four-inch square needle into your... Ah. Now, don't that sound like fun? It is. I can't deny it. It's fun. You and me, we're going to have lots of fun. Your barracks is over there. Fall out! Next. I'll be. You're only 12 years old. What do you mean, sir? I'm 17 years old. You will be in about five years, but for now, you're 12 years old. No, sir. You've lost your primary molars, son, but your 12-year molars aren't even in yet. 
You've still got your baby teeth. Oh, sir, this is a mistake. Listen, sailor. I don't have the time or the inclination to argue with you. You take your file and report to the chief medical officer at the front desk. He'll arrange for your transportation home. Next. Smoke in bed, huh, recruit? Yes, sir. No, no, sir. Well, you see, sir, the other guys know how to smoke, and I'm just kind of learning how, that's all. So you just want to be like the other guys? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what your old pal Turkle's gonna do for you, Graham. He's gonna teach you how to smoke. Now you take a deep puff. Yes, sir. Tell you something, Graham. Before the night's over, you're going to qualify as an expert smoker. Yes, sir. Expert. What are you doing, sailor? Excuse me, sir. I was just looking at my boat, sir. Your boat? Big, ain't she? Oh, yes, sir. She's the biggest boat i ever seen. Officially, she's Navy ship BB-57. But to you and me, she's the USS South Dakota. She's a battleship. And if I ever hear you call her a boat again, I'm gonna rip your lungs out of your skinny little body, understood? Yes, sir! And don't call me sir! Didn't they teach you anything at boot camp? I'm a chief gunner's mate. Call me chief. Yes, sir. Yes, chief. Now hear this. Sweepers, man your brooms. Clean sweep down four and out. Take your trash to the incinerator. I figure if we keep this up, we'll have the whole darn ship painted in about 26, 27 years. <laughs> I know what you mean. Hey, they're giving out duty stations today. What you put in for? Pharmacist, mate. You? Radio operator. I know Morse code. Uh, a little. <laughs> Don't count on getting what you put in for, guys. They put boots on this tub for one reason. To man the guns. Oh, that doesn't matter to me. The gun assignment's just as good as... I'm sorry, sir. I didn't see you, sir. So I... Apologize. What's your name, sailor? Seaman Second Class Graham, sir. Calvin Graham. Well, don't just stand there. Get back to your duties. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. You really know how to screw up, Calvin. Who is he? His name's Holbrook. He's the XO, the ship's second in command. And he's also a Barracuda. For your sake, you better hope he's got a poor memory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. Hey, Davis, get the DDPO to send some help out. People, what you're looking at are 16-inch guns. We have nine of them on board. Never. I repeat, 
Never be caught topside when these guns fire. This gun can take a projectile that weighs 2,700 pounds and toss it 20 miles. It produces a concussion and a blast that will suck you right along with that projectile. These are not your guns. Gangway! Now hear this. Miller, WJ, quartermaster first, lay up to the charge room. What you're looking at are brand new quad-mounted 40 millimeter guns. That are all yours. Gangway man. Chief, all you men want to gather around me, please. <clears throat> Good afternoon, men. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. sir. I'm Lieutenant Shriver. Sergeant Shriver, to be precise. That's a pretty funny name for a sailor, huh? Lieutenant Sergeant Shriver. <laughs> yeah, I'm your division officer. I'm in charge of all the 40 millimeter guns on board. Now, Chief Avila has given me your assignments. McBride. Sir. You're the pointer. That means you sit in this seat and you fire the guns. Graves. Sir. You're the trainer. That means you sit in the other seat and you help McBride here find the target and aim at it. Merlin Stallings. Sir. As first loader, it is your responsibility to keep the ammo in the gun. Graham. Sir. Now you're the second loader, Graham. It'll be your job to keep your head down and keep that ammo coming. You think you can handle that? Oh, yes, sir. All the rest of you men are the extra loaders. It's your job to keep the ammo coming from the magazines up to the guns as fast as they can take it. Now, you will all be trained at every position on this gun mount. If one of you is hit and taken out of action, then the next man in line can move up and fill your position. Not good, but not bad. You hear that noise, men? Those are the 16 inches moving their turrets. Anytime you hear that noise, you get yourselves below deck. So those babies go off and you standing out here, you're dead. Now go on! Boom! Attention on deck! How's it going, young fella? Seaman, second class Graham, sir. It's going fine, sir. What's your job, son? Second loader, sir. If Graham here doesn't do his job as second loader, I can't do my job as skipper. We're a team. And if we're going to win this war, we've got to be a great team. Carry on. Attention on deck! Now hear this. All the Liberty Party fall in for inspection on the board. Oh, Liberty. Woo! Sweet Liberty. Mm. Yeah. Come to the women look out, because here comes Davy Clough, and he's noted for bail. Oh, I'm the one they got to look out for, Davy, not you. Mm. Not you, me. <laughs> oh, you two bubble gummers are really good with the ladies, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I am. How about you, Calvin? Me? Women? <laughs> you bet. Well, good. But we know the perfect woman for you. If you're man enough. Well, lead the way. That's you, Calvin. No, 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 no. Davies, Davies next. No, no, Calvin, you go ahead. Davies, please go. Calvin, you're in front of me in line. Meeny, miny, moe. 
catch you, Calvin, by the door. Hey, Calvin, you going in the $2 door or the $5 door? Well, two bucks is all I got. <laughs> You got three minutes, kid. No, you got two and a half minutes. So if you want to talk, talk. If you want to cry, cry. But you want to. the other guys on me, but I didn't do nothing. I didn't either. No. Yeah. You did nothing? No, I thought you did. I could have sworn you done something. <laughs> oh, <but> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit the deck. Come on, let's go. Now wake up. Feet on deck. What's the matter, Chief? What's going on? We're getting in the way. That's what's going on. Oh, where are we going? We're going to war, sailor. To war. General Come on, quarters, let's go. General Move it. Quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Sixty-nine. May I be of assistance to you, men? Yeah, Padre. Got a spare hacksaw in your Bible? <laughs> Chaplain Rose, did you talk to the warden for me? Yes. I'm sorry, Graham, but you're not allowed to write letters and make phone calls. And I'm forbidden to do it for you. The Navy considers desertion a most serious offense. But I'm not a deserter, sir. I'm in here because I'm underage. I was supposed to get discharged. It's all a mistake. Graham, when your ship sailed and you weren't on it, you were listed as AWOL. In wartime, that translates as desertion. Sir, please, just, just give me a trial or a hearing so I can prove myself innocent. Sorry, son. There's nothing I can do. You're an idiot trying to get people to buy that 12-year-old stuff. Well, Calvin, at least I have enough sense to tell him you're 15 or 16. Okay, Scott. Get your stuff together. You're out of here. I'll be back for you in a minute. What are you doing? Well, Calvin, how many guys you asked to do this for you? I don't know. Nine, ten, maybe? Well, I told you, I don't remember numbers so good. Her name is Pearl, okay? Just call this number and tell her where I'm at. What's in it for me? What do you mean? Greenbacks. I get caught smuggling a message out, I may not get out. You get my message? Hundred bucks. Okay. All right, Pearl will find a way to pay you. Thanks. Let's go. Detail, form up at the front gate. close to the Japs. You know the... F Here we go. All hands manned in battle stations on the double.
Did you make out your will? Yeah. Seems kind of strange. Somebody... Tw somebody 17 years old writing a will. Yeah. Who'd you leave your stuff to? I left my government insurance to my mama, my bike to Frank, and everything else to my sister Pearl. You got a good baseball mitt, you can leave it to me. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend? I lost my grandma tire. She always made me feel important. Now hear this. Any bogeys are approaching. Barrier 270. Range 10 miles and closing fast. Driver. As you were, man. As you were. In today's action, the South Dakota knocked 32 Japanese aircraft out of the sky. Yeah! <laughs> this gun crew gets credit for seven of them. That makes you the top gun crew on board. Congratulations. Yeah! Now, as soon as this gun is cooled, I want it clean. Carry on. Yes, yes sir! sir! <laughs> Did you care from General Quarters? Good job today, Sailor. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, sir, we lose anybody? Uh, we lost the first loader. His name's Paul Chatelain. The number two turret took a direct bomb hit. Captain Gatch caught a piece of shrapnel in the throat. How's the skipper doing, sir? Well, it looks pretty bad. But he'll make it. How old are you, sailor? I'll be 13 in April, sir. Now hear this. All topside hands. Now I watch. Now ready to go? Yes, sir. She's as good as new, sir. Sir? Sir? Yes, McBride. May I ask where we're headed, sir? Place called New Caledonia. We need repairs. Joe, we got some shell casing back here. Give me a hand, will you? 
Graves, you check these water reservoirs? Yes, sir. Carter, check the principal chip dealer. Hi. Uh, Graham, isn't it? Sir. Uh, Graham, the other day you said something to me to the effect that you were 12 or 13 years old. Oh, yeah, that. Well, sir, I was just kidding around, that's all. Yeah. Well, sir, do I look 12 years old to you? Carry on, Graham. Yes, sir. I need a couple of men out on Signal Bridge. All right. You guys can sleep it off in here. Yeah. I'm just having a party! Yeah. Just having a party. <laughs> well, hiya, buddy. Wow. What have we here? A sailor boy. How you doing, sailor boy? Okay. Okay. Come here. What do you want? I just want to talk to you. Hey, tell me something. What's your name, sailor boy? Calvin. Calvin. Where are you from, Calvin? Houston. I don't like Houston. Do you, Gillis? Nah. Quit, quit touching me. But I like to touch you, sailor boy. Ooh, quit touching me. Hey. It's your problem, Calvin. Come on. You a bad boy? You a what? tough guy? I don't want no trouble. Hey, I, don't I don't like tough guys. Get your... I don't want no trouble. Get them off me. Come on. <laughs> I was definitely in need of a woman tonight. I guess you'll have to do, sonny boy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do just fine. Just fine. This is an old wound here on the back of your head. Where'd you get it? Battle of Guadalcanal. <laughs> the Battle of... Well, it's been reopened. You want to tell me what happened? Who'd you get in a fight with? No fight. I just fell off in a bunk. Well, you're pretty banged up for just falling out of a bunk, aren't you? I sleep on the top bunk. It's a long way down. This will probably hurt. Tell me the truth, son. What happened? The truth? Here's what the truth is. See to it that this man sleeps on a bottom bunk from now on. Yes, sir. Got him? Hey, quiet down over there. one big risk for a couple of packs of smokes. After you memorize the number, rip it up. They'll search you before they let you out. I don't know. I mean, what if I get caught? You think I'm going to tell them? Just tell my sister Pearl where I am and hang up. I really need to 
danced on your face, didn't me. I'll live. Not if you don't get out of here, you won't. It's true. You really are only 12, aren't you? My name's Sparky. I hear I'll be coming into your cell today. I had a friend join up when he was 14. He's still in. How'd they finally catch up with you? New Caledonia. Now will all our division fight finish report to frame 110, third deck on the double. Well, I think he wants it all wired. Calvin, Chief says Captain Gatch wants to see it. What did you do? Nothing. I don't know. Well, just don't sit there. Better move it. Come on, let me down. Come in. See McGram, see the captain, sir. Send him in. Sit down. Just received a dispatch from the Navy Department. Your mother told him you're 12 years old. Judging from your silence, I assume that's correct. Yes, sir. It is. But, sir... Graham, I have orders to put you on the first ship back to the States. The only problem is there are no ships going back to the States. So what on earth am I supposed to do with you? Captain, you don't understand, sir. The Navy, it's all I have, sir. This ship, it's my home. It's the only real home I've ever known. Please don't take that away from me, sir. I want to stay in the Navy, sir. I want to make it my career. Nothing I can do about it, son. Captain, if you send me home, what am I supposed to do? My daddy's dead. My stepfather won't let me live with him and my mother. I'll end up on the street again. Sir, I do my job here. I'm part of a gun crew that's got great results. I am aware of your record, Graham. I've had nothing but good reports from your division officers. You're just a child, a boy. Sir, I'm a sailor. And a darn good one. It's not my fault I'm only 12. Son, I've had to kick two underage sailors off my ship. Both were 16. One got his eyebrows singed from a gun blast and decided he'd had enough. The other one got just plain homesick. I'm proud of what you've done for your country. But the Sir, let me stay aboard. Please, at least for now. Well, till I can find a ship going back to the States, I don't have much choice, do I? Carry on. Thank you, sir. Oh, Graham. Chief. There's a saying in the Navy that you can judge a ship's size by seeing how long it takes for a rumor to get from the bow to the stern. The scuttlebutt that a 12-year-old is serving on board just made the trip. Don't be surprised if somebody don't give you a bad time. Thanks, Chief. Hey, Graham. Mom asked me to burp you after you had your milk. <laughs> hey, boy. You better eat all those veggies or I'm going to tell the skipper on you. Hey, Graham. <laughs> I hear when you go to your battle station, you take your teddy bear along. It's fourth load. <laughs> You got a problem? If you're 12 years old, I'll kiss your rear. <laughs> <laughs> Not until you shave, you won't. <laughs> you're nothing but a liar. If you wanted out of the Navy so bad, why didn't you tell him the truth? But you're a dirty, lying coward, bucking for stateside. <laughs> Calvin wanted to. He could be back in New Caledonia right now, playing ping pong. But he chose to stay on board. So leave him alone. That's all you need. Get caught fighting on this ship. We'll be off here quicker than you can blink. Ignore those jerks. Call me a coward, Mike. Ignore him. Hey, Calvin, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Do not let these idiots get to you. How's your new gun crew? You like it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, the trainer's a real jerk, but the other guys are okay. Who took my place? 
a guy named Denny Howell. He's a nice guy. Hey, I got this great letter from my girl. General Porter, General Porter, all hands, man, your battle station. Now hear this, message from the captain. The Japanese convoy is headed our way to resupply their troops on Guadalcanal. They are escorted by battleships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers. If they get through, they could wipe out our boys on the island. We will be engaging the enemy tonight. Good luck, man. That's a 16-inch go, 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 go. Oh, come on!
That wound on the back of your head may take a while to heal, but these other things should heal up pretty quickly. You're a lucky young man. I know. Well, that's all I can do for now. Thank you, sir. You all right? Yeah, fine. Thanks for your help up there. You saved some lives, sir. Now hear this. Message from the captain. We had a tough night, but we dealt out very heavy punishment to the enemy. I want to commend each and every member of the crew for your outstanding performance and devotion to duty. You sure you're okay? Calvin, you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. You're all so lucky. The poor guys, maybe more, are trapped out here. Blast from the big guns blew them overboard. I haven't seen Hal yet. You seen Hal? No. He's dead. Yo, man, come with me. Burial detail report to the chaplain, a bath number three turret. If you don't think you can handle it, don't go in. This is purely voluntary. No, I can't do it. servant now departed, receive the sheep of thine unfold, the sinner of thine unredeeming, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into thy hands, merciful Father, we commend the soul of thy servant now departed, receive the sheep of thine unfold, the sinner of thine unredeeming, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Scuttlebutt says we'll be in the Brooklyn Navy Yard for repairs for a couple of months. You gonna try to make it home? <laughs> you betcha I'm gonna make it home. Uh... See you on the bridge in half. Yes, sir. What are you doing, officer's country sailor? Excuse me, sir, but I have permission to see the captain. But that doesn't change the fact that you are 12 years old. Excuse me, sir, but I'll be 13 in April. Yes, but for now, you're 12. Granted, you are the only 12-year-old that I've ever recommended for two Purple Hearts. Graham, do you realize that you are probably the youngest American to serve in combat in this century? No, sir, I didn't. Sir, when I get home, if I can get my mama to agree to let me stay in, Will you help me then? Sir, in the Navy, regs concerning underage sailors are written in firm black and white. Yes, sir. But my life isn't black and white, sir. My life is the Navy. Take your liberty, Graham. Talk to your mother. If she agrees, I'll see what I can do. 
Thank you, sir. But your eyes, Calvin, they look so old. Oh. What happened? Somebody sneak up behind you and yell, Bunza! <laughs> I'm glad you're old. Come on, let's go to Pearl's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that one there. Just look at you, Calvin. I can't believe time goes so. <laughs> Mama, can we talk? I think I'll go in the other room. I want you to read this, okay? It's awful big words you're using nowadays. Well, a friend of mine wrote it on the ship for me. Mama, all it says I is... I know what it says. Mama, please. This is what I want. I want a career in the Navy. Please, help me. I wish I could have given y'all a more normal childhood, a more normal life. You did the best you could, Mom. I ain't complaining. You're too young, Calvin. Too young of a hero. Grandma Tyre is very, was very special to me. If you can just give me a couple of days emergency leave, I can make it back to Houston and back in no time. I'm not giving you leave, Graham. But I am giving you a four-day pass. That should be sufficient to get you home. But, sir, I can never make it to Houston and back in four I days. I damn well know how far you can go on a pass. Nobody is getting more than a four-day pass. But if you want to go to the funeral, you can get to Houston in four days. Then you can turn yourself into the authorities down there. But, sir, I, I don't Graham, understand. let me show you something. Paperwork. Paperwork, Graham. Reams of it. All of it generated by a snot-nosed 12-year-old who tried to beat the system. I want you off this ship. But, sir, Captain Gatch told me that if I got Captain my Captain Gatch to... is no longer the commanding officer of this ship. I am. And I will be until the new captain comes on board. And when he does arrive... I do not want him to be faced with this. Four-day pass. Once you get back to Texas, head for the nearest recruiting station and turn yourself in. You tell them how old you are and they'll take care of you. But the idiots who signed you up handle this mess. Dismissed. But, sir, I don't want... Dismissed.
not sign. Bring the package to sign. Your ship left port last night. You sure you didn't know that when you came in here? No, sir. I, I was just turning myself in like I was told. And you expect me to believe you're only 12 years old? Yes, sir. The United States Navy does not enlist 12-year-old boys. Well, they did in this case. He's 12 years old. Well, then how do you explain this notarized letter from his mother stating that he's 17 years of age? He faked it. And you claim that your executive officer only gave you a four-day pass to travel from New York to Houston. It doesn't make any sense. Like I told you, he told me not to come back. He said to report to you. Well, this is going to take some looking into. I'll get the paperwork started, but let the boys in Washington figure out what to do with you. Will you be responsible for him until I can find out what I'm supposed to do with him? Yes, I will. You go home and you wait by the phone. I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. Yes, sir. And one more thing. If your story proves out, I'll discharge you right here. If it doesn't, you're in a lot of trouble. Gotta go to work, Calvin. You okay? No, fine. Just getting tired of waiting, that's all. It's been four days, Pearl. Don't get discouraged. See you later. Yeah, bye-bye. Hello? This is your bus ticket. Two dollars for meal money. And here's your orders. Your bus leaves in one hour, so you'd better get a move on. Sign here. You think I got another ship, ma'am? I have no idea, sailor. Those orders are sealed. When you get there, present them to the officer of the day at the gate. They'll tell you where to go. Thank you, ma'am. Still making marks, huh? How many you got? 42. <laughs> And how long do they keep guys at the charge with desertion anyway? I don't know. Two to five, maybe. Maybe more. There's no way I could do two years in here. <laughs> My birthday. Huh? <laughs> Today's my birthday. <laughs> I'm 13 years old today. Plan on a party. More cake. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up down there. All right, Jen. Work detail. Move your feet. Oh, excuse me, sir. It's Graham's 13th birthday today, and he's had a pretty rough go of it, and I thought maybe you could give him a break or something. His 13th birthday, huh? How old you say you are, boy? I'm 13. Not only a deserter, Graham, you a liar. Go to hell. Now you clean up this mess. Wood's giving you a little birthday present, Graham. Now I want you to start all over again. You scrub the block, the steps, and the drunk tank. Have a square inch and don't you skip the toilets. Then after that, you brush your teeth. You consider it done, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. Sorry for the interruption. Now, you were saying, Miss Spencer. It's, it's Mrs. Mrs. Pearl Spencer. And 
As I was saying, I have reason to believe that my little brother is being held in your prison, or your brig, or whatever you call it, and I won't see him. Mrs. Spencer, I'm sorry, but persons being held in this facility are not allowed visitation rights. Well, I think you better make an exception in this case. You see, my brother's only 12 years old. This is his birth certificate. His name is Calvin Graham. Oh, actually, Calvin's 13. Today's his birthday. Mrs. Spencer, the Navy does not make a practice of incarcerating a 12, a 13-year-old boy. Then he is here? Well, I won't see him now. It is against Navy regulations to reveal the name of any person being held at this facility. Well, I... And I think you had better leave. You listen to me, Buster. I just got an anonymous telephone call from some guy who told me you were holding my little brother in here. Now, he also told me that I'd better get him out before you people kill him. I want you out of my office. Now. You either leave, or I'll have you escorted off this base. Then I'll go to the newspapers. Now, Tattoo, the smoking lamp is out. All hands turn in and keep silence about the decks. Uh, sorry, Calvin. I, I thought I, if I told them it was your birthday, they'd, they'd, they'd go easy on you. Uh, don't matter now. You just worked your 24 hours without a break, and you say it doesn't matter? Nothing matters. Go to sleep. When I first came here, I was wearing a uniform. Shut up and just put them on, huh? I won't leave here dressed like a prisoner. I want my uniform. Or I don't leave. you to listen and listen good Graham we have a little saying around here what happens in the Navy stays in the Navy there's going to be reporters out there I want you to tell them that you were treated fairly and that at I'm no not time... gonna lie about what happened in there I haven't lied yet so why should I start now the United States is at war young man and if you do or say anything that could hurt the Navy then you're hurting this country's war effort is that what you want to do? Hurt your country? I fought for this country, sir. 